All right, capitalists. So today's episode is going to center around the idea of saving Western civilization. But when we talk about Western civilization, a lot of us could be talking about completely different things. You know, are we talking about enlightenment values, the concept of natural law, the developments in science and technology, or are we talking about、uh, nations specifically, such as the United States or any Western European nation? All of these things are interconnected, but at the same time, they're also separable. So, for instance, you could save the USA as a nation, but at the same time, lose all semblance of enlightenment values. And at that point, would it even be worth it? If we really can't save them all, we have to ask which ones can we save? Which ones are the most worthy and most likely to be salvageable?、Uh, just a quick heads up before we get into it. During this discussion, we explore some kind of black pill territory, and at some points, it might even seem like we're advocating that we just surrender to the anti-fascist mob, which we're definitely not. The main point that we wanted to get across in this discussion, even though we may not have gotten it across all that effectively, is that there are a lot of things that come and go in cycles, and instead of constantly fighting against the current. We think maybe there might be a way to strategize around that, so that we're not always fighting this uphill battle. Anyway, I'll try to sum it up at the end in a way that doesn't encourage you to go out and vote for Bernie Sanders. All right, we've been dealing with a lot of technical difficulties lately, but we're going to get through this. So today we are going to talk strategy. Now, not all of our listeners are libertarians, I don't think, but I think we can all safely say that we're united around the idea of. Anti-communist action, right? Yes. We yes. just we want to get rid of the left. We, we, we want helicopters <laughs> and we want、uh, we want boots that allow us to kick people off helicopters. Yeah. <laughs> We're campaigning for the money for helicopters and helicopter pilots <laughs> and boots. Yeah. So the reason we're talking strategy today is because everybody seems to be strategizing in 2018. The alt right is strategizing. The liberalists are strategizing. And that、uh, guy T recently came out with a video for a libertarian strategy. Yes,、uh, and I admire his pragmatism because for those of you who are not familiar with us, I'm the pragmatic one. Although he's also coming around to my side. Would you believe when I first met him, he was an idealist? A total idealist. Like I would say, oh, how dare you like Donald Trump? You statist, <laughs> you dirty statist. And I think a lot of libertarians will still target us with ac- accusations of statism or like Trump worship. Correct. Simply because we think that a president is effective and having an impact on the culture, which ultimately favors our agenda. Yes, I mean liking Trump does not mean that we agree with anything he does. For for example,、yeah. I l- like him a lot because he he smashes our opponents. He,、yeah. he smashes our opponents way better than any of us really do. <laughs> the amount of triggering is reals, but not only that, he's very effective at getting. Results that favor us to occur. I, I don't know if he's doing this on purpose or not. Like、uh, to be honest, I don't care. He's pissed、uh, California off that now progressives understand why you need the ability to secede,、yeah. and this is just an example. But various things are happening because of Trump, not necessarily because he's doing libertarian things, but he's doing things that will work in our favor.、Yeah. And just look at what he's done to the mainstream media. I know it's the, <laughs> the, the ass hurt is real.、Yeah. <laughs> That guy T has advocated that we need to appeal to collectivism. To collectivists, and I, I agree that that's a very pragmatic solution. But at the same time, he's not considering the fact that there's another far more pragmatic and simpler solution, which is actually just to let shit go south. Look at the Western world. We're not saving the Western world. I've talked about this before. We're not going to make the Western world great again. It's not possible. We are already in decline. A decline which. Has no reversal. The Western world will have to hit rock bottom before it could rise from its ashes again. And the best way for small government, more individual rights, is actually just to let the Western world collapse. Who's going to fund the mass surveillance when there's no longer money to fund the mass surveillance? For example, who's going to run the police state when there's no money to pay the police?、Mm-hmm. So your strategy, instead of appealing to collectivism, is, is to actually enable leftism. Let them do their shit. But my strategy has been to 
shield myself and my family and friends as much as possible from the fire that is to come. Okay. How far would you take it though? Would you vote for Bernie Sanders, for instance? I would vote for Bernie Sanders over Hillary Clinton because well, obviously. Would you, would you vote for Bernie Sanders just to see him instate a communist state and watch it fall? It depends. For example, in the case of Trump versus Sanders, mm -hmm. why would I vote for Sanders when uh, I realize that Trump will do a much better job smashing uh, the progressives? Mm -hmm. Whereas in the case where it's like Jeb Bush versus Sanders, I might actually decide, hey, you know what? Like, let Sanders have the reins, let him run the shit to the fucking ground. The whole policy game collapses and then we uh, and then everyone gets the freedom. I think a lot of people's response to what you're proposing right now, which is quite far out there, I guess, is like you're being a nihilist. Like you're admitting defeat already. Like you're willing to concede just to watch them take over and let it fall. It's not I'm not conceding the ultimate victory. Mm -hmm. Why must I fight this fruitless war with them when I realize that I will gain what I want eventually anyways? Why not take this time in which we're not going to get much done anyways to conserve resources, gain resources, so I will come out in a stronger position once conditions are more favorable. favorable. Yeah. I guess we, sh we could kind of make a case right now, build a case for right, right now for why the West is in so much trouble. And I think it's because they have so many Progress, enemies. Uh, progressivism. Yeah, well, <laughs> in short, progressivism. But I think the U.S. in particular has so many different interest groups and nations which want to see it fall and are, are willing to throw money at the problem. I mean, George Soros is all in, but George Soros is actually just a small piece in the, in the overall picture because China looks like they're willing to go pretty far to watch the U.S. fall in terms of economic warfare. And then there's also from forces from within, yes, you know, the progressives. That's what yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. talking about. It's yeah. That guy, he, he's talking about uh, human nature, yeah. which is, yes, in group preference. We all have in group press preference. That could arguably be categorized as collectivism. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing is when shit goes south, groups will fracture. Groups will fracture to their fundamental components like family, close relatives, and, and friends, and trusted allies, yeah. immediate friend circles. If we allow the whole thing to just dissolve, like the Western world, just to let it burn to the ground, mm -hmm. we will have smaller communities. We will have our individualism back. Right, right. And I am willing to let the world burn to the ground just for this. Okay. Are you worried though that if you do let it fall to the ground, there is a chance that you might not see victory in your lifetime? Why not? Because the collectivists are really powerful, especially the left. The left is really powerful, and they're one of the contenders to take over once everything collapses. When you say the left, mm -hmm. who do you mean? But uh, who do you mean? I think I, I I generally mean the globalist, actually, the people who are trying to fit every country into the one world government. And do you think uh, the globalists are powerful enough to do so? Yeah, I disagree. Because, for example, look at Europe; that it's fracturing. Every globalist power base has come under fire. It's falling the fuck apart. That's why the actual, like George Soros is shitting his pants right now. <laughs> and obviously it's not just going to be George Soros. All these guys we don't hear about, they're shitting their pants right now. Mm -hmm. You know why? You know why they hate China so much? You know why they hate Russia so much? Is because they realize that as soon as the Western world falls, they're going to run in, take as much power as possible, and they're not going to do it in a globalist manner. They're going to implement China's first policies. They're going to implement Russia first policies. It's going to go back from a unipolar world to... More like nationalistic, yeah, tribal... Yeah. Tribal. Uh, essentially, we're going to go back to a world before World War II, where uh, nation states will be once again forced to fight against each other mm. for their own interests. Mm -hmm. This super cycle is coming to an end. Yeah. We're going back to nation states yeah. we're, uh, and we're going to have that for a while. Yeah. But actually like the greatest enemy of the globalist is kind of the new, another, a different kind of new world order. Yes, correct. Yeah. Because globalist wants to either add them to the fold or take out the final two remaining superpowers in the world. They, they want China to be part of the, the globalist agenda. They want Russia to be part of the globalist agenda. Mm -hmm. China's not doing it because... How can we be sure that they're actually not part of the globalist agenda? Because China wants to rule the world, mm. plain and simple. They don't... China is essentially coming in here and saying, we're the next superpower. It's our time now. Why would I deal with you fucks and give all power to you when we could take the reins? Mm -hmm. 
uh, why would China do that? Like China has never been moral or particularly humanitarian. Why would they care about this supposedly utopian globalist order? Mm -hmm. But uh, the biggest advantage we have against China in that scenario would be the fact that it will take them time to actually impose any sort of control over uh, actually making vassal states. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens in the next cycle, past our own lifetime, that's, a, that's the next generation's problem, not our problem. Mm -hmm. So to summarize, you think it's a good idea to just let the West destroy itself. Yes, and then try to build our own society from the ashes. Okay. Why bother fighting all these collectivists when they possess both the mainstream narrative and control over the institutions. Like, why bother? There's no point. Like, why would you even bother con trying to convince them? Like, well, okay, I was, I'll say why. Because it's not so much that we're trying to convince them. We're not trying to convince the leftists and the Marxists. We're trying to convince the people who are on the fence or normies and people who are sympathetic towards our side in the hopes that when it's all over, when the ashes clear out, then we can rebuild a society with these people. You know what? I'm going to go back to that comment on human nature. Once shit has hit the fan and there's no bread and circus, sure, you can talk about how you want universal health care, but if there's no one's going to give it to you, are these people in any uh, position to do anything but be self-reliant and capitalistic? Sure, yeah. Why are we doing the job that Mother Nature is going to do it for us anyways? Okay. Then why, why are we doing this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm having fun. I like yeah. hanging out with you, and yeah. you seem to you seem to like your channel. So you know, <laughs> I, I can I consider uh, it, this to be a project that two friends work on for fun. That is true. Yeah. All right. Did we end it there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>